Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A subcompact hatchback from Honda, the 2019 Brio 1.2 RS Blacktop CVT, and an MPV from Suzuki, the 2019 Ortiga 1.5 LGLX AT. We'll also have a glimpse of some of the latest automobile models and concept cars from around the world. This week, we have the 2019 Aston Martin AMRB003 and the 2019 Acura NSX. Plus, a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two compact sedans, the 2018 Volkswagen LaVita and the 2019 GAC GA4. Together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the recently held launch of the latest generation Ford Everest on our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is Autofocus and we'll be right back after this short break. High performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! Now with Pulse Technology. Delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Every time I'm on the road, I can also expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! Now with Pulse Technology. Delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Part of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Honda. In this car review, we put on the spotlight on a vehicle that has been well-loved by many through the years. With its newest edition now available in the market, a lot are curious about what it offers this time. It's none other than the 2019 Honda Brio. Watch this. This car view features the Honda Brio 1.2 RS Blacktop CVT. start off with the exterior design of the Brio. One thing about the Brio's design that catches anyone's attention is its honeycomb front grille that's further framed by multi-reflector halogen headlights with LED parking light guides. At the back, a new rear design is present instead of a large glass panel found in its predecessor. 
These features allow the all-new Brio to maintain an excellent rear visibility and provide improved body rigidity, while providing safety for the passengers. On top of that, this Baron comes with an RS Design Gloss Black Front Grille, RS Design Side Sill Garnish and Rear Bumper Garnish, Tailgate Spoiler, and RS Design 15-inch Alloy Wheels. All of these make for a sportier exterior. Inside, the Brio offers more cabin space as well as improved legroom compared to its predecessor. This is attributed to the 60mm extended wheelbase and 90mm extended cargo depth. The seats are wrapped in leather material and are further highlighted by orange accents. The Brio also has a reliable infotainment system that is equipped with a 7-inch capacitive touchscreen display that is available in Bluetooth, audio streaming, and USB port. Six speakers are available for the driver and passengers to enjoy sound. Let's talk about the powertrain of the Brio. It is powered by a 1.2-liter 4-cylinder SOHC IVTEC engine that is capable of giving out a maximum of 90 horsepower and 110 Nm of torque. It's coupled with a continuously variable transmission developed based on Honda's Earth Dream technology. This transfers all power to front wheels. Talking about safety and security, the Brio doesn't miss a thing, considering that it has received a 4-star SAN and cap safety rating. It comes equipped with the essential active and passive vehicle safety features under Honda's G-Con technology. For one, it boasts a dual front driver and front passenger SRS airbags, an anti-lock braking system as standard for all its variants. That was none other than the 2019 Honda Brio, a car that continues to improve the legacy of its nameplate. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions, the WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph or visit Autoplus Sports Zentrium located along EDSA, across White Plains. Ah, the things that make my day. My mini-me, my kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all new Vios. My Vios, my drive. Ako po si Michael Kaliwag, labing dalawang taon ng patrol crew para sa Enlex Esitex. Bilang patrol crew, handa kong marap sa anumang di na sa ang sitwasyon. Naalala ko pa noon, 2009, Bagyong Ondoy. Papatrol kami sa index nang may nakita kami isang pamilya na natrap sa bubong. Kahit kailangan magpatrol, nagdesisyon kami na sagatin at iligtas sila. Kami ang index SETEX Patrol Crew. Kaagapay at katuwag nyo sa mas maayos na paglalakbay.
welcome back to Auto Focus. And we now have the latest auto industry news. Toyota Motor Philippines has officially launched the all-new Hi-A Super Grandia in three new variants, Elite, Leather, and Fabric. We're launching the latest addition to the high ace lineup, which is the top of the line, high ace Super Gandia. It comes with three variants. We have the Super Gandia Fabric and Super Gandia Leather. And the latest addition, the new variant talaga, is the high ace Super Gandia Elite, which is the top of the line. The newest additions to the high ace lineup come with a series of developments on the design, performance, and safety features. The exterior has been refined as well as the interior. Some time back, you also launch a high ace. What's the difference? Yeah, this Super Grandia is, uh, as the name is saying, this is a one rank higher uh, in terms of uh, luxurious interior, or riding comfort, uh, also the exterior design. So uh, Grandia and the commuter, just a regular people mover. But uh, this one is people mover in luxury. Then we can offer the uh, very high grade of the uh, riding comfort. Uh, this is some kind of uh, a one lung higher version of the uh, other regular Grandia or commuters, highest, other highest series. When it comes to the powertrain, the all-new Super Grandia is powered by the fuel-efficient 2.8 diesel engine that is capable of producing 174 horsepower that is made into an automatic transmission. Moreover, the McPherson strut suspension provides smooth handling and stability, and a four-link coil spring rear suspension reduces cabin noise, vibration, and harshness, ensuring a smooth and comfortable ride even on long drives. Another feature that Toyota wants to highlight in the Super Grandia is the Toyota Safety Sense, which incorporates active safety features, which identify factors that may cause accidents and aid the driver in eliminating these factors. The Super Grandia Elite is the only variant that comes with Toyota Safety Sense. I proudly noted some portions of your speech earlier when you said that the Philippines is considered as one of the biggest markets yes. for vans like this. Why do you think so? I believe our product, like this highest series, can be accepted by the uh, Filipinos' uh, taste. And also the uh, public transportation is really required in the uh, life of the Filipinos here. This is really product, our concept and the demand of the Filipinos really matched each other. Chengxin Tires, or CST, a huge tire manufacturer company, has launched five new passenger and 4x4 tires in line with their expansion in the Philippines. The new roster of products include the Parkour or the PK01, the Sahara AT2, and the Sahara MT2 Sports Utility Tires, and Marquee MR61, and Medallion MDA1 Passenger Tires. Today's launching is two parts of it, actually. It's one is introducing who CST as a brand is, and of course, we launched uh, several offers for passenger car tires and SUV tires. The Parkour PK01 is a versatile tire offering high performance and handling ability on both wet and dry situations. This high-speed tire coupled with an optimized tread pattern design guarantees comfort in every ride. Uh, Parkour PK01, which is a sport tire. There is an increase of demand as well in the sports tire segment here in the country. Meanwhile, the Sahara AT2 features a reduced tread pattern void ratio, square profile design, flat contact patch, and serrated edges. The main feature of this tire is the square profile, and at the same time, the added protection and reinforcement in terms of the ply and the tread compounding. So it makes it more conducive for intermediate use in terms of off-road, but not compromising your on-road performance. For the Sahara MT2, it boasts improved mud dispersal, maximized sidewall traction, and high puncture resistance. The main feature of this tire is as a hybrid offer that we have for mud terrain operation. You can use it on road and it's quiet. At the same time, it can be an effective tire when it comes to the operation of really mud terrain or off-road, I would say, driving. 
Moreover, the Marky MR61 boasts enhanced durability and lower rolling resistance without losing any traction and mileage performance. Passenger tire lineup is the Marky MR61, which is more likely to be an entry level, day to day, daily driven tire with fuel efficiency. For steady handling and longer tread life, the Medallion MDA1 gives drivers braking and steering confidence with its high stiffness rib design. A premium alternative, which is a combination of both leisure comfort riding and fuel efficiency and of course a little bit of sport. According to CST, they are committed in providing its Filipino market new developments and innovations through their products. The Phoenix Petroleum 2019 Autofocus Pre-Christmas Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival will be back at the SF Mall of Asia Open Grounds this coming November 14 to 17, 2019. Visitors are free to check out the latest productions and innovations from the country's top auto car companies and manufacturers. Vehicles from Ford, GAC, Honda, Isuzu, Kia, Maxxis, MG, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Subaru, Suzuki, Toyota, and Volkswagen will be available for test drive. Come and visit SMO Open Grounds on November 14 to 17, 2019 for the Phoenix Petroleum 2019 Autofocus Free Christmas Multi-Brand Test Drive Festival. Remember, test drive it before you buy it. Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine, takes another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. Motoring Today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just the click away. The tactical survival in Arms Expo is back on another leg with a more intensive take on the global issues on environment, economic uncertainty, security threats, and the like. Visitors may avail of the free seminar during the event. The Visayas leg of the expo will take place on September 5 to 8 at the Cebu Trade Hall, third level of SM City Cebu. Admission is free. You can pre-register online by logging on to the Tax Expo site. See you at the Cebu leg of the 2019 Tactical Survival and Arms Expo. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Be part of the 2019 2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's Head to Head, our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category. This Head to Head sees a bumper-to-bumper -bumper comparison of two of the most notable compact sedans in the Philippine market. One is under a brand that has been in the local market for years. 
while the other one is the newcomer yet has already proven something. We're talking about the Volkswagen La Vida and the JC GA4. Watch this. Our first stop is our two compact sedans' respective powertrains. Under the hood of the 2018 Volkswagen La Vida is a powerful 1.4-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that is capable of giving out 130 horsepower and 225 newton meters of torque. Transferring all power to front wheels is courtesy of a 7-speed DSG transmission. This engine is combined with Blue Motion technology, providing more fuel efficiency. On the other hand, the GAC GA4 runs on a 1.3-liter inline-4 GL turbo that generously produces 136 horsepower and 202 newton meters of torque. The six-speed automatic transmission sends more power to front wheels. All of this combined is what makes this variant the top range. Comparing the two respective engine setups, Levita's edge is that its transmission combines the convenience of an automatic and the fuel efficiency of a manual. Let's check out the exterior features of our two compact sedans. Looking at the Levita, you can see that subtle hint that is all about old school design. The grille is simply accented with a horizontal stripe pattern, further highlighted by Volkswagen's badge. These set of LED headlamps simply sit here, not much one to catch attention. Character lines are also present wrapped around the car's body. Over at the rear, the taillights are straightforward as well. The only thing that highlights the back of the car is this chrome strip along the bottom of the car. In addition, the Levita powers through the road with 16-inch alloy wheels. Overall, the exterior of this compact sedan is one that is simple but not boring. Also, it is worth noting that even though the Levita is China-built, the exterior screams German all over. Meanwhile, the exterior of the GA4 is one that's simply sporty while maintaining a contemporary look. The front fascia straight up defines the exterior of the compact sedan. The chrome grille may look simple, but it's functional when it comes to enabling different parts of the car. There's also these halogen headlights, which is only available in our top-of-the-line variant here. Moreover, a set of 17-inch alloy wheels does its job well. Both the Levita and the GA4 are Chinese-built cars, but their respective exteriors state otherwise. The Levita screams German all over, while the GA4 simply doesn't look like a Chinese car. It's time to take a tour inside the Levita and the GA4. For the Levita, one can see that everything inside is straightforward, much like how it is in its exterior. The premium feel is attributed to the leather and plastic materials that are present in every corner, a true Volkswagen smart in its car. The cabin is spacious, probably because it doesn't have much high-tech stuff in its console and dashboard to come with it. This is also allows the Levita to have generous head and leg room. Moreover, the infotainment system found in the Levita is equipped with six speakers and is available through CD, MP3, AUX, USB, and Bluetooth connectivity. On top of all that, the Levita is equipped with features that center in added convenience. It includes Climatronic air conditioning, which ensures clean and fresh air conditioning inside the car. There's also the tire pressure monitoring system, which checks the tires constantly and maintains the correct tire pressure. Meanwhile, the Electronic Stabilization Program takes charge of the detecting of critical driving conditions. Meanwhile, the inside of the GA4 is filled with premium, sturdy material, specifically the steering wheel, instead of hard plastic materials. The interior offers ample cabin space, especially with regard to the head and legroom. The infotainment system of the GA4 comes with an 8-inch infotainment system that comes available with AM, FM, AUX, USB, Apple CarPlay, and Android connectivity. Sound is enjoyable through four speakers. This is probably the GA4's edge over the Levita. The GA4 has a touchscreen display system while the Levita does it. When it comes to added convenience, the GA4 comes with features that target nothing less. We're talking about this air conditioning vent at the back for the passengers at the rear to remain cool during long drives. It's also equipped with cruise control, rear parking camera, parking sensors, power seats, push start, and auto headlights. For safety and security, the Levita is equipped with two airbags, anti-lock braking system with EBD, traction stability control, and parking sensors. Meanwhile, the GA4 comes with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, stability control, traction control, hill start assist, and four airbags.
That concludes our head-to-head -head feature on the 2018 Volkswagen La Vida and the 2019 GAC GA4. We hope you enjoyed seeing two compact sedans battle it out bumper to bumper. More about the automobile here in Autofocus as we usher in our segment featuring the autos of the world, spotlighting concept cars as well as newly launched and about to be launched automobile models from around the world. For exciting viewing in this edition of your automobile electronic magazine, we have the 2019 Aston Martin AMRB 003. Let's watch this. Continuing its march into the manufacture of mid-engined hypercars, Aston Martin is proud to present the design concept for AMRB 003 at the 2019 Geneva Motor Show. The British mark can also confirm that the AMRB 003, previously known as Project 003, will benefit from the close involvement of Red Bull Advanced Technologies in its design and engineering, continuing one of the brightest and most exciting engineer partnerships in the automotive world. As its codename suggests, the AMRB 003 follows the Aston Martin Valkyrie and Valkyrie AMR Pro as the third hypercar in Aston Martin's mid-engine story. Both evolutionary and revolutionary, AMRB 003 will incorporate concepts and technologies taken directly from F1TM and applied to the epoch-making Aston Martin Valkyrie, providing it with performance to meet and surpass the performance demands and existing top-end hypercar rivals. Sharing the same fundamental styling and aerodynamic philosophy with Aston Martin Valkyrie, the AMRB 003 features a pronounced front keel and large rear diffuser, with the underfloor generating the bulk of the downforce. However, AMRB 003 will also benefit from next-generation aircraft morphing technology to create a variable airfoil across the entirety of the rear wing. As the direct descendant of Aston Martin Valkyrie, there was never any question over AMRB-003 being built around a lightweight carbon fiber structure and clad in carbon fiber bodywork sculpted for maximum aerodynamic effect. Owned by RBAT and featuring active aerodynamics and morphing aero surfaces, the AMRB-003 will deliver outstanding levels of downforce in a road legal car package. The technology transfer continues with active suspension and electronic systems that share a common philosophy with Aston Martin Valkyrie, delivering a chassis blessed with next-level precision, control, and driver connection. NLEX Viaje Tips presents Healthy Road Trip. It's time for that much-awaited vacation, but here are a few things to watch out for. Sitting for long periods of time can form blood clots in your body like in the legs. To avoid that, stop for a quick break, get up, and move around to get your blood pumping. Car air conditioners speed up dehydration, so make sure to drink water frequently. Lastly, while driving, Protect your eyes from the sun by wearing UV-blocking sunglasses. And for a smoother trip up north, you can now drive all the way to your destination with one RFID. Get your Easy Trip RFID sticker now. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrada restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrada restaurant, only for the foodies.
Welcome back to Autofocus. Our special feature is next. This special feature is all about the arrival of the newest edition of Ford Philippines' well-loved mid-size SUV. Let's take a look at the grand unveiling event held at the Megatent Events venue in Quezon City. Watch this. Ford Philippines has officially brought the newest edition of the Everest to the Philippine market. Initially launched in the local car scene in 2003, the Everest has gone through various changes and improvements, which put the model among the most loved mid-size SUVs in the game. This year's edition is no different as it comes with a lot of new things. We are launching the new Everest. So this is the, this is the newest, latest uh, generation of Everest and it's come with the new powertrain, the 2-liter bi-turbo and also mated with the 10R80 transmission. So it's give a very nice capability and handling uh, for those who enjoy driving the big SUV but yet making sure that the driver has control of the vehicle. The powertrain of the Everest received a new generation 2.0-liter bi-turbo diesel engine that gives out 213 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque, while the 2.0-liter turbo engine delivers 180 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. This engine is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission that offers improved fuel efficiency and better acceleration. According to Ford, with the new powertrain, customers can enjoy lower service maintenance costs with once a year scheduled service interval instead of twice a year for better ownership experience. We are here launching the new Ford Everest, which brings in with it an all new bi turbo engine, which is with a 213 PS power segment leading and 500 Newton meter torque against segment leading. When it comes to the design and styling of the Everest, its ruggedness has been refined with a new grille treatment incorporating a secondary grille texture against its chrome HID headlights. With a redesigned bumper, the new Everest is also fitted with a new 20-inch split-spoke alloy wheel design with darker wheel accents that add to its rugged appearance. Inside the Everest spacious cabin features a new ebony interior theme, which is responsible for the premium luxurious feel of the car. The new Everest also enhances driver convenience, comfort, and safety with keyless entry and push-button start, hands-free power liftgate, power folding, third-row seats, active park assist, and autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and vehicle detection. We are talking about autonomous emergency braking that's capable in the new product that we are launching right now, as well as parallel park assist and other driver assist technologies that we are bringing into the segment. What is also more important is that it brings in some customer required features in a very apt manner that is used in an everyday life. Available in two variants at launch, the new Ford Everest starts at 1,995,000 and is available in all four dealerships across Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. That was our special feature highlighting the grand arrival of the newest Ford Everest in the Philippine market. We hope you enjoyed. And up next is another exciting feature on all of the world. This time around the 2019 Acura NSX. Let's watch this. Acura introduced the 2019 NSX supercar and continued a compelling presence in Monterey as it showcased the brand's full lineup along with a celebration of Acura's motorsports program. Acura was well represented at the prestigious annual gathering with a cadre of road and racing vehicles including the new 2019 NSX and its racing cousin, the NSX GT3, competing in sports car series around the world, the RX-05 Daytona prototype campaigned by Team Penske, and the all-new 2019 RDX, boasting Acura's next generation of design, performance, and technology. Making its global debut during Monterey Car Week and on display at the Quail, a motorsports gathering, the 2019 Acura NSX boasts new design cues and fresh color schemes, including a vibrant thermal orange pearl paint and indigo blue and full red leather options for the interior. 
Additionally, the 2019 NSX receives a host of chassis enhancements, including stiffer stabilizer bars, a new grippier tire, and software tuning designed to elevate performance in all driving conditions. Whether on the street or racetrack, the result is a supercar even more responsive to the will of the driver, leading to a nearly two-second faster lap time around the legendary Suzuka circuit. The 2019 NSX further sharpens the performance and prestige of Acura's one-of-a-kind hybrid exotic, the only supercar made in America, and the only one utilizing electric motors to enhance all aspects of dynamic performance. The NSX is powered by Acura's Sport Hybrid SHAWD technology, consisting of a twin-turbocharged mid-mounted V6 engine paired with a 9-speed dual-clutch transmission, an integrated electric direct drive motor, and a torque-vectoring twin-motor unit at the front axle. The things that make my day. My mini-me. My kind of jam. My passion. My blend of coffee. My inspiration. That's all good with the all-new Vios. My Vios. My drive. of the 2019-2020 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA2019. Then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2019-2020 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2019. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards will win. You choose, you decide. Vote now. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven-seater in style. All-new El Tiga. Debut. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate here in Auto Focus as we have our second car review this week. Our featured vehicle in this edition of Car Review boasts a lineup of advanced features and notable details that make it stand out. It's also fairly new in the market. We're talking about the 2019 Suzuki Ortiga. Our featured model in this edition of Car Review boasts a lineup of advanced features and notable details that make it stand out. It's also fairly new in the market. We're talking about the 2019 Suzuki Ortiga. The 2019 Suzuki Ortiga now comes with a bigger and more powerful engine under its hood. From having a 1.4-liter engine, it is now powered with a 1.5 inline 4 gasoline engine. Suzuki also added a bit to the power and torque figures. The engine now spits out 103 horsepower and 138 Nm of torque. That's 11 horsepower and 8 Nm of torque more compared to its predecessor. Our featured variant here retains the same 4-speed automatic transmission. The suspension setup is also made up of the old McPherson with coil spring at the front and torsion beam with stabilizer at the rear. So there's no doubt that this MPV will perform greatly on the road, even when faced with bumps and imperfections.
When it comes to the design and styling of the Ortiga, Suzuki didn't miss any detail. It's like they carefully pinpointed what needs to be improved and then they proceeded to do it. The exterior of the Ortiga features a taller nose and a wide and elegant front grille. It looks enhanced but it still boasts that Ortiga fashion at the same time. Meanwhile, the integrated lower grille and fog lamps add a sense of stability and make the car look edgy. Top it off with these fog lights that make the Ortiga look nothing but edgy and sporty and go ready. On the sides, our MPV here is hugged with deeper curves and character lines. If Suzuki's goal was to make the Ortiga appear stronger, then they succeeded at it. Moreover, the Ortiga runs on 15-inch alloy wheels. Additionally, for its size, the latest version is bigger and wider than the previous one. With its size of 4,395mm long, 1,735mm wide, and 1,690mm tall, it's easy to guess that it also comes with more space inside. And speaking of the interior design, it's time to hop in and check what's new. Looking around inside the Ortiga, one can instantly point out that the bold design of the car on the outside continues on to its interior. Suzuki clearly had sophistication and flexibility in mind when enhancing the Ortiga. The new steering wheel has a flat bottom for better leg clearance, while the gauges are painted with metallic chrome for a sleeker look. The seats have a deep curb with the fabric showing a 3D effect. Ventilation is also not a problem at all when inside the Ortiga. A rear air conditioning is present to keep the second and third row passengers comfortable. Small storage spaces are also added all around including a coin holder, ventilated cup holder, improved center console, and door pockets to accommodate more hand carry items. For the infotainment system, it comes to the standard 10-inch touchscreen display that is available in AM, FM, Bluetooth, USB, aux, and navigation. Sound is enjoyable through four speakers. Now, when talking about advanced technological features that center on the safety of the driver and passengers, the Ortiga comes with the Hartec, Suzuki's new generation platform. The new frame effectively disperses impact energy to improve safety while reducing noise and vibration. Another notable feature is the total effective control technology, which scatters collision energy across the vehicle frame to mitigate damage to the car and passengers. Aside from these, the Ortiga comes with the standard necessary features such as the anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, and dual airbags. That was the redesigned and improved Suzuki Ortiga, our featured vehicle in this car review. Hi, this is Sydney, and today we're gonna talk about the dreaded check engine light. What it is, what it means, and why you should not freak out. So you're driving normally, minding your own business, and then suddenly, BAM! The yellow light of death comes out, the dreaded check engine light. You start freaking out, don't know what to do. You start the car, you stop the car, you turn it on, and it's still there. Oh no, it's the end of the world, something's wrong with my car, my engine is busted. Relax, it's none of those things. Quite simply put, a check engine light simply means that one of the various sensors in the engine senses that something is wrong or is reading wrong. Almost all the sensors in the car measure voltage, is in electricity. It reads anywhere from 0 to 5 volts, and if that sensor is calibrated to read, say, only from 1.5 to 4 volts, then for some unknown reason, it becomes 4.1 volts, then the check engine light will come out. That's all it means. One of the sensors reads something wrong. Now, whether it reads something wrong because of a glitch or temporary condition, or because the sensor is failing, that you will have to find out. And no, you cannot find it out by going on Facebook. You cannot find out going on the internet asking, may check engine ako, ano yung problema? You ask 10 different people, you will get 100 different answers. And none of them will be correct. Especially the people say, oh, nagkaroon na ako niyan, ito yung problema niyan. No, they are wrong. Do not believe them. Because there are 999 possibilities why that light comes out. The only way for you to find out what that means is if you either, one, have a scanner like this, or you bring it to the casa or the dealership and you have a bigger scanner like this. 
So now we'll show you what happens when you actually do bring your car in for scanning. First, we'll take the regular shop grade scanner that we have here. This reads pretty fast. All scanners will actually have this port. It's a trapezoidal port. It's called an OBD port or onboard diagnostic port. Every car has this port and it's always, always located somewhere here. It's standard that all car manufacturers agree to. So this will work for any car. This will tell you what the check engine means. There's always an error code with, that starts with the letter P followed by three numbers. You can actually type that into Google and then it will pretty much tell you what it means. So for this Honda City, we actually have a check engine and we're gonna plug this in right now. So we have it plugged in. It's actually here on the corner. You turn the engine on. On, not start. And we wait for it to fire up because it was now gonna talk to the engine ECU and pull out the error code and see what it means. This is what we mean by the error code. It starts with the letter P, followed by three numbers. On our particular scanner, it actually tells you what component is the problem. So this one here is mass or volume airflow circuit low. It might be an intermittent lean condition, it might be an intermittent voltage condition, or it might be that your mass airflow sensor is over 10 years old and it's dead and it's dying. At least it narrows it down to any of the 999 possibilities because it could either be mass airflow sensor, misfire, crank sensor, ABS, oxygen sensor 1, oxygen sensor 2, fuel tank evaporator sensor, the list goes on and on and on. So without this, you won't be able to say for certainty what is wrong with the engine or actually what sensor and what component is wrong with the engine without this. The first thing that shops will do is, oh, that's it? Okay, we just hit the race. So we perform the scan test again. As you can see, the message says no powertrain trouble codes. It says no more. Nine out of ten times, this will work and check engine is gone. So we unplug the scanner and then that's it. You can go on your merry way. But the bigger question is, will that check engine light return? Possibly yes. Like I said, it's caused by one of the sensors not reading correctly. So why it didn't read correctly, we can only speculate. But the two most common reasons are, one, external factors. It just, something just goes wrong. Electronics do that sometimes. Or it might be a symptom of that that particular sensor is on its way to being dead. So it reads wrong now, it reads fine. In the future, it might read wrong again. If it gets too severe, and if you do the erase procedure and it does not erase, that means that the sensor is busted and it's time for replacement. Now, what causes check engine lights? Oftentimes, you'll read on the internet and the groups, masama lang ismo. Uh, no, that doesn't work. Masama yung gasolina mo. Possibly, yes. Because there is such an engine code called cylinder misfire detected that was caused by bad batch of gas whether your 98 octane is not really 98 or me two weeks of gasolina you don't know can it be caused by faulty spark plugs yes it can also can it be caused by me not using the car for three years possible because that particular sensor could be busted and rusted particularly let's say crank shaft position sensors these things have a magnet inside them and the engine gets hot, it gets cold, gets hot, gets cold. The magnet eventually becomes less magnetic. That will also cause a check engine. So like I said, you cannot find out for certain without one of these things. Now, actually, if you go to Lazada, you just type OBD scanner, you will find a lot for 400 bucks, 700 bucks, 900 bucks. You can actually just buy one of those and it will work on your car. Just for you to be able to narrow it down. And if you do bring your car to the shop, Make sure that once you scan it, you take a picture of this, show it to the shop so they won't be punching in the dark and asking a lot of questions and basically guessing why. That will be a big help. And if the check engine light doesn't go away and then if there's something wrong, you only need one of these things. Professional level vehicle diagnostic scanner. This you cannot buy in Lazada anymore. <laughs>there you have it why you should not freak out if your car suddenly has a check engine light it's not the end of the world so hopefully now you understand a little bit more better on why it happens and how to get rid of it and that's auto focus this week on behalf of my dad butch gamboa 
We hope you have found this edition of your automobile electronic magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Until next time, this has been Ray Louis Gamboa.